Uh, so we're going to keep Napoleon on stage to moderate the next tech chat, which is going to be with Paul Tomes, the founder and CEO of Passkit. So uh, this is a totally different sector, mobile, wallet, access by the cloud, and Paul will explain more about it. There is a, there is a theme to this. We went from the uh, surfing musical, musical yes. Australian to the uh, banking Australian with more hair. And now we're back to the music musician. So you're actually a, a musical musician. banker. Musical banker. With yeah, some we, hair. So we brought them both together. <laughs> oh, only uh, just, though. It's fast going. A musical <laughs> banker with a sense of humor, which is why he left the banking industry. <laughs> Strange, eh? <laughs> Impossible. So going to your Twitter profile, or your business's Twitter profile, you changed it, mate. I have, yes. You've simplified I was expecting it. your questions. Like today. all startups, you've simplified it just for today. <laughs> Your Twitter profile says the mobile wallet engagement enablers. That's correct. Everywhere. Everywhere across the world. Anywhere, anytime. Everywhere, anywhere, time. So what the hell does that mean? So we, we develop, deploy, promote, and market mobile wallet solutions. Now, mobile wallet is a relatively new phenomenon. There's a lot of misunderstanding around what mobile wallet means. Um, in terms of what Passkit provides, if you think of an engine being an engineer as well, if you think of the components of the engine that make up a wallet ecosystem, so everything that currently sits in your leather wallet, it doesn't just sit in your leather wallet, you transact with it, someone's distributed it to you, someone's actually created it in the first place. There's a whole range of ecosystem around mobile wallet. Um, now, we're, Passkit is the oil in the engine, so as these engine components change and refine and get enhanced, you always need the oil to be able to get the most out of the engine and indeed to get the most out of mobile wallet, which is why we've changed and really refined our, our language, working with a great uh, branding company, actually, around mobile wallet engagement enablement, because there's many, many components to mobile wallet, uh, and we retain You're saying the technology is very co complicated, right? Because it's a whole chain. Yeah, it's a... Uh, because when I first met you, you were selling the name Passkit. Yes, is you were selling passes for you know iPhone. OS. Correct. That's right. So it evolved. How did you decide to evolve that from the the passes into the mobile wallet? Because that yeah, surely that's a lot more it, complex offering. Yeah, it, it was actually um, demand for the market. So we started the business. Um, so I, I left banking after getting frustrated. Um, instead of buying Ferraris and things like that, I was investing in technology. I was investing in people. I've got about six businesses that I've pre uh, that are still running, but now I'm totally dedicated to Passkit in terms of my time. So we built technology businesses that were running um, while I was banking. Hopefully, there's no one from HSBC or Credit Suisse listening You're to that. Allowed to do that? Yeah, I did it at the weekends. Oh, okay. so it was always at the weekends in the evenings. Um, so 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 built these technologies and processes, and then. Then uh, we build a cloud infrastructure uh, really around push server, so being able to deliver push messages to um, the smartphone. And you built it here? Uh, we built it from Hong Kong, yeah. We did some work in Thailand, which was more enjoyable on the beach, but um, we, bu we built much of the technology well based here in Hong Kong. Now, along came Apple announcing Passbook uh, June 12th, 2012 at the WWDC, and we'd been attending WWDC for some time. And my business partner and I, Nick, uh, Nick Murray, looked at each other and went, holy cow, you know, this is a, this is a wallet application that's standard, non-deletable uh, across iPhones. So that meant basically 300 million devices across the world had, had that application. And what we also saw at the same time is developers were really struggling with the necessary infrastructure and indeed to maintain that infrastructure uh, both in terms of cloud, push server, sort of content creation, the, sort of the difficulty. But when they first launched it, they didn't really promote it, right? No, it just not, at all, not at all. Not at all. And still actually they're not doing massive amount of promotion apart from the release of Apple Pay, which has helped us to piggyback off, ah, oh, now we can start to see the credit card in Passbook. So all of the companies that are using Passkit are able to put their brand alongside these credit so is that, cards. So is that where the kind of the tipping point is the fact that Apple has said we're going to do no. we're going to do a, our own wallet. Yes, that was the first, that was when Passbook was founded. We we actually um, so when Passbook was announced, Apple had called the programming guide Passkit programming guide, but they hadn't trademarked Passkit. <laughs> 
So we quickly <laughs> trademarked Parskit and booked the Parskit domain. So anyone that was searching for Apple's Parskit programming guide came to us. So we got a hell of a lot of traffic initially um, from developers. But we, what we soon found out is developers typically don't like paying for things. So they were using our service. And at the same time, we were getting businesses coming to us saying, well, can we, can we use this? Can we use your online tools? Can we use your API? Can we use your infrastructure? Right, so we can focus on the core part of our business, whether it's a brand or an agency, and, and you take care of this technology piece. And also, we don't want to just do it for our Apple consumers. We want it to be sold for our Samsung consumers or Huawei phones or people using other apps. So we then pivoted and change from being solving a developer's problem to solving a business problem. So that's where we extended our kit to include redemption, conversion, uh, distribution, so integration initial, to social media. So your initial client base was loyalty program type people and yeah probably well it was initial client base was developers then it was loyalty type people yeah. so brands were coming to our smaller businesses typically who are a bit more thoughtful around technology not the big brands to start with then the next pivot were agencies coming to us uh, marketing agencies the four a's that type of thing and they were saying actually we want to offer this as part of our service to our clients as a marketing channel so what's happened over time is whereas at first you talk about mobile wallet and people think payments Mobile wallet is a marketing channel, and it's inconceivable for the world not to move to mobile wallet over the course of next three to five years. What most people don't appreciate, and indeed this is probably the biggest challenge, is mobile wallet isn't just payments. Because if you look at your wallet today, if you take your leather wallet out, there's a lot of other content in there. There's a, there's a lot of rubbish, rubbish isn't there? Yeah. Rubbish. And so being an engineer and being uh, you know, a lean, lean Six Sigma background, waste just pissed me off, excuse me, my French, just really annoyed me. So I was seeing all this wasteful coupons, also being in Hong Kong, just handing out coupons and flyers or marketing adverts. I was sitting on a bus and I saw people just looking at their phone and there's massive billboards. They're not even paying attention to the billboards on the building. It costs millions of dollars. It's like, this is just wasteful. So we can leverage the technology of mobile wallet mm. plus the, per, you know, the capabilities in the smartphone, knowing where someone is and flipping marketing on its head. So if you think about current marketing, most times it's about getting to someone at some point in some place and hoping they remember that brand at a point when they want to make a purchase. Mm. So what Parsket is doing... Recall through, and retention. Here, yeah, exactly. Lots of R's. Exactly. Lots of, yeah, there is a lot, of, a lot of R's in that. So what, what we're doing is we're finding, actually, this is flipping marketing and advertising, that it's about being with your consumer when they want to take action at the right time, in the right location. So by enabling, by getting content into the mobile wallet and then leveraging location awareness, and we also produce beacons and prefer people that so have So give us an example of, of somebody that, the, like, I need a real case study. Yeah. Give us... Well, so Lane Crawford here. Around. Lane Crawford is here. Who so. are they? What do they, some, so how do they use are. how do they use your just give us an example of how yeah, they so use Lane, your Lane Crawford I guess as they were expanding into China they were facing a business problem yeah uh, they reward high net worth individuals with gift cards every three months you get a certain gift card through the post it's quite a costly process for that uh, not everyone receives it uh, there's certain inefficiencies associated with that process and it's not a really cool experience that's the other thing it doesn't align to their innovative brand so they use Passkit to replace that plastic gift card with a digital gift card, which is stored within Passbook, if you've got an iPhone, and 80% of Lane Crawford's customers are iPhone users. Equally, if, they're, if they are not an iPhone user, we also have a solution for people to store that in the other phones. And then when they walk close to Lane Crawford, they get a nice reminder to say, hey, remember you got your gift card here, come and spend it. And at the same time, can offer other promotions through our other technology, which is iBeacon technology, you can also entice when you see certain behaviors going on within the store. So we, through iBeacon technology and the linkage with Passbook and the capabilities in the phone and um, Android phones, through data analytics and modeling of that behavior, Lane Crawford is able to offer value-added services, whether that's to the phone or indeed in some cases, some of our brands, that triggers an app to wake up a sales associate and said, hey, there's a guy that's hanging around this clothesline. They keep going back Very and forth. Very important to wake up sales associates. Absolutely. But one of the things you told me that I thought was really interesting, although you started the business here, initially there wasn't traction in Hong Kong. For all all the talk there is about Hong Kong people loving their gadgets and technology, you go, ah, it's, it, and you found traction in 
Thailand. Yeah, it's, in, Thailand. Thailand's in, in, a really great In market. Indonesia. So maybe explain a little bit. So why, A, why did you go into other markets? But what did you find that was happening in these other markets that wasn't happening in Hong Kong or isn't happening in Hong Kong? Yeah, I, I mean, we... I guess in terms of market, we didn't go in with an initial strategy to say we're going to penetrate certain markets. When Nick, my business partner, was leading on the technology side, I was leading on the market development side. And it was predominantly at that time building SEO. So 99% of our business comes to us. We actually don't have many sales associates. I'm just building up a channel partner uh, team that's going to take care of some of our partners and agencies. But all the business comes to us. Because and, you and because you made the smart move of acquiring past kit. Yes, and also we set an SEO footprint from the word go. So okay. I guess where we had a bit of insight is the types of words people we'd be searching for in the future as mobile wallet becomes a marketing channel. So we were we're high up in search ranking. So people come to us from across the world, and we've always been multi multi. So what's the hardest word they use to find you? Oh, you could be uh, initially. It would be things like, how do I create a password pass? Right. Okay. So it was initially the tech problem. Yeah. Now it's things like, what are the latest mobile marketing channels, okay. or how how to get the most out of digital marketing? How can I? Inc increase my conversion. Where is return on investment from marketing? So it's very, so marketing, it, it's, yeah. it's very marketing and advertiser driven. That was a, wasn't really so back originally. So the ties. Space. How did that happen? How did the ties come on board? <laughs> um, well, we like Thailand for a start, yeah. and Thailand is a good example. Where, for example, you know, Seven Eleven is one of our clients through through a partnership, and they've got an interesting model that they're leapfrogging across sort of desktop or broadband straight into mobile. So in a lot of ways, the emerging markets don't have this legacy of getting rid of old marketing and advertising channels. They can instantly start to access smartphones. Now, smartphone penetration in these countries is incredible. You know, never before have you seen in an emerging market someone having access to the computer of this power. And, and even if, even at sort of the, the, the lower income salary points within Thailand, they're still accessing you know, smartphones. It's not really the feature phone side of things. Similar to Japan. So Japan initially didn't trigger because of the feature phones and everyone thinks, oh, Japan must be up there. But people were used to using this, whereas Thailand, suddenly someone's got this and say, hey, I can do so much with it. So we're finding it's really growing. Um, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, so so primarily Brazil, access, South America. Brazil. South America is on fire at the moment. So how do you manage a, a global business out of Hong Kong? I mean, are you well, it's, it's are you in a plane the whole time? No, or not at all. Skype? I mean, it is a SaaS business, so it's a software yeah. as a service, so people can use our, our, our business, uh, our, our software, wherever we are. We're cloud-based and we're fully scalable across the world. Um, where we have, we are starting to... Um, we, we've got partners in different locations, so we have a partner channel strategy. Those partners can be agencies like an Ogilvy yeah. or an Epsilon or those types of companies that, that have clients in different locations have reputation and credibility in the marketing advertising space and are lacking the technology so they use and the you smarts. As an enabler. You're exactly. behind the scenes. Exactly. A bit like an email marketing. A exactly thing. right. Yeah. So yeah. you don't really see Pask is not a consumer brand. Okay. Um, uh, and indeed we're a B2B to B to C type of business. That's so. the longest B2B to B. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so if okay, so you're a SaaS model now. Is your SaaS model about pay a lot up front and then, you know, kind of eat into your credit over time? Or is it is it a freemium, you know, here's 10 passes if you really want 100, pay me $99? So, do, so what we, do you find works in the SaaS industry? Yeah, right? we, we've pivoted for a couple of reasons, I guess. because we pivoted didn't, a few times. Yeah, we have. God damn it. <laughs> it's like I'm on a round, roundabout half the time. Um, so... The SaaS piece is consumption based on number of pieces of content, but we've also got different models. So if you use traditional words, you've got sort of cost of impression, cost yeah. per action, cost per, cost per redemption. We've also got... Um, so it's based a, on a marketing a and advertising model yeah, exactly. in terms of cost of, of impressions. Of yes, okay. exactly. So if you issue a content, we can do that model. But in, in actual, in some markets, we're also doing a percentage of the transaction value, which doesn't always, doesn't work for all wallet content. For example, I just shared my business card in digital format you know there's no value to a digital card but what it, in terms of the value is instead of going to the printers i use pass kit to create so we got one minute world. left how how are you going to take this globe more global 
more global. And are you are you setting yourself up to be acquired by Apple because they just can't get? No, I don't. Around? I don't think Apple's an acquisition. Well, maybe it is. The biggest problem with Apple is they don't solve the other. Their their prime drive is to solve their devices, sell their devices, and sell yeah. their software. We solve the problem for Android. We solve the problem across all different smart operating systems. So I don't know that whether it's that. Maybe a, like an Adobe marketing cloud type of thing. Um, so that, that could be an acquisition. Potentially, it's an IPO in terms of the types of traction that we're getting. Um, in terms of where we go globally, um, on market side, it's really accelerating the emerging markets. On product side, we're further enhancing our product so there is more capability to manage proximity and to manage content that's not just mobile wallet. So we're broadening now, because we've seen this flip in terms of what marketing and advertising is doing, we can actually leverage our platform to enable different types of channels uh, to, to really be where the client is when they need it. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Wow, you were really kind on me this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in front of bankers. You know, Talk about a great pivoting story and leveraging, <laughs> right? Uh, and you've also raised some financing recently, yes. too. Uh, so being a banker, we did seed this ourselves, and we've done, uh, it depends on how you define it, but we've raised 2.1 million US dollars, uh, what we called a Series A, and then we did a small rights offer within that. And uh, we're launching Series B as of next month and looking to close out June, July. And who are some of your investors? Oh, there is the man over there. Where is he? Where's Alan? He's here. Oh, you're at the back. Yeah, he's here. Alan Chan from Vector, Vector, uh, Vector Ventures. He is, again, you know, similar to your story, absolutely fantastic. Comes down to a lot of trust. Comes down to a great relationship. He's been a great advisor for us. Um, equally, we have personal um, investment from people in Morgan Stanley, so my banking contacts certainly helped. Um, but yeah, we've had, we've had a fantastic time working with Vector Ventures. Oh, great. Good luck. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you.